Hey, welcome back to the Audacity Bootcamp. Let's talk a minute about the mix and render function within Audacity and something that you need to be aware of if you're using mix and render before you export your podcast. Let's get started. Hey, one of the features within Audacity is the ability to mix the tracks that you've got together, mix them down to one mono track or to a stereo track before exporting them. You don't really have to do that as a podcaster. You know, typically, if you're like me anyway, and you're, you're self-producing, you're self-editing, you know, you're self-hosting your podcast, you don't typically have to do that because my podcasts aren't huge. But if you're in the music industry, if you're using Audacity to do music, which is what I used to do with Cakewalk years ago, mixing down your audio into a final track is an absolute requirement. You can't not do it. But in Audacity, you don't really need to do that, or in podcasting, rather, you don't really need to do that unless you want to. I have a screen open here that's got a music track on the bottom and a, a voice intro on the top. This is a, a track that I use in, in my HOA podcast that I uh, record and edit. And this is part of a template that I use over and over again within that podcast. And typically with these two tracks, I would have two other tracks of, uh, you know, people speaking. One of them would be me and then a co-host at the time too. And so we're talking a total of four tracks. After I record this podcast and I do all of my editing on it and I get it the way I want it, I can just export it. I don't have to do a mix and render on it. But if you want to do a mix and render on it, it can be useful at times because you can see what the final uh, waveform is going to look like before you export it. And it'll help you to identify some of the anomalies that might be occurring that you wouldn't otherwise see in individual tracks. So what I want to do in uh, this video is show you how to mix and render your tracks and something to avoid uh, before exporting your tracks after you mix and render. So let's look at this screen. Let me start off by just uh, playing this a little bit. I got the playhead at the zero point. I'm just going to push the space bar and let's listen to this a little bit. And while we're listening to it, I want you to uh, keep an eye on the meter toolbar, and I want you to see where the audio is peaking in this as, as it plays. Hello, and welcome to the Lionsgate HOA podcast the official podcast of the Lionsgate Homeowners Association. Lionsgate is a master plan community of 1,936 homes located in beautiful Gilbert, Arizona. And now, here's your host for this episode. Okay, you can see how the audio starts. It's a really good level. It's, there's no distortion. There's no clipping. There's nothing bad with the audio. And then the song drops out and the narration comes in, the narrator does his thing, and then when he's done, the music comes back in and goes back up to normal level. And the level looked good. If you were looking at the meter toolbar during that, you'll see that it peaked out at just above a, a minus 6 dB. And so that's a really good level for a podcast. This thing is ready to be mastered to a um, minus 19 luffs if I'm doing it in a mono or a minus 16 luffs if I'm doing it in stereo. Either way, it's a good podcast and it's ready to go. But let's suppose that, okay, I've got a speaking track in this or two speaking tracks in it that come in after the music fades out there at the very end. And so I've got those two tracks in here and I want to see what the composite looks like before I export it. So if I do Command A to select both tracks, it's say Control A if you're on Windows, but I'm on a Mac, so I'm using Command A. It selects all the tracks in the project. Now, you have to be careful when you're using Command A or Control A because if you have tracks in your project that you don't want to select, they're going to get selected. Remember, Command A or Control A selects everything in your project. I'm safe doing it here because I've just got two tracks. So life is good, life is simple, and uh, I can use Command A. So I've got both tracks selected. Now, if I come up to the Tracks drop-down menu, and I go to mix, I have a couple of different options. I can mix and render, and I can mix and render to a new track. If I had a stereo track selected, I would also have that top option to mix my stereo track down to mono. But these are both mono tracks, and so I don't have that option. But if I go ahead and select the mix and render to a new track, it takes the tracks that I've got selected, and it preserves them, it keeps them intact, but it also renders, mixes them together and renders a brand new track and puts it at the bottom of the uh, 
of the project and calls it Mix. You can see there in the label it's in the label it's called Mix. And so it took both of those tracks and mixed them down to one final audio. That's a good tool to use if you want to use it, if you want to see a composite of your podcast from beginning to end and just check it for weird anomalies that may have happened. This is a good way to do it. But here's the caution. If you mix and render in your podcast editing and you're going to export your podcast to your host, here's what you need to do. You need to be careful that you just solo and I can come over here to this new track and click solo, that you solo just that one track before you export it. And here's why. I'm going to unsolo that track, and I'm going to rewind back to the beginning here, and I'm going to play it for you again a little bit, and then we'll look at the narration part as well. And you're going to see that the audio level increases. Now all of a sudden we're getting a little bit of clipping. Why? Because it's adding the audio in all three tracks together. And if you export it that way and you forget to solo the track that you've mixed and rendered, it's going to take all of that audio and it's going to export it into your MP3 or, or your M4A file and the resulting volume is going to be too high and you're going to get some distortion and clipping. So let's uh, listen to this just a little bit. And again, keep your eye on the meter toolbar. Let's see what the level does. So you can see right there that we're getting up close to a zero. We're already about 4 dB higher than we were before because remember the audio now is a composite of all three tracks. And so the audio level, the volume level is going to go up. It's going to be higher. I'm going to put my playhead right here just before the narration and let's see what it does with the narration. Keeping in mind now that we have two narrations that are identical. that We have the top track, the original narration, and then we have the mix down track in the bottom of the same narration. So let's see what it sounds like. Hello and welcome to the Lionsgate HOA podcast, the official podcast of the Lionsgate Homeowners Association. Lionsgate is a master plan community. Now, I don't know if you could hear it or not. I could hear it because I've got headphones on and I'm listening to the uh, to the audio that uh, that I'm playing back. There's a little bit of distortion. There's a little bit of clipping in the narration. A little bit of buzzing in there. I can hear it on those peaks whenever he's talking. And so this is just a good reminder that if you're going to do mix and render. Make sure that you solo the track that you've mixed and rendered down to before you export it. Because remember, everything in the header of your tracks, all of your volume settings, all of your balance settings, everything that you've got in that header information in your track gets exported with your final MP3 or M4A file or whatever you're exporting as for your podcast. So keep that in mind and be sure to solo that mix and render track before you export it. Now let me show you one more thing. I'm going to do Command Z, which is undo. And again, on a Windows computer, it's Control Z. That's really your best friend, uh, Command Z or Control Z, because it's a, it's an undo of your last command. But I've hit Command Z and I've I've undone that mix and render. But let's look at one more thing as far as mix and render. If we go back up to the Tracks drop down menu, and we look at that other feature. Last time we went to mix and render to a new track. But if I just do mix and render, what it's going to do is it's going to take these same two tracks, it's going to mix them together just like before, but your original tracks are going to disappear. Let me show you. I'm going to click mix and render. And my two original tracks are now gone. They've disappeared. They've been melded into one. If you're a Star Trek fan, it's kind of like a mind melt. They've been melded into one track now, and what you see on the screen is a composite of those two tracks, and those two original tracks are gone. You can use this method too if you don't really care to go back and do any editing on those two original tracks or the three original tracks, whatever you had in there at the beginning. If you don't mind losing those tracks, this is another way to do it. But if you want to preserve those original tracks so that you can go back in the future and do more editing on them or do some more manipulation on them or pull out a piece of it and put it in another podcast, mix and render to a new track is the way to go because if you just mix and render, You've lost those two original tracks, but remember, you haven't really lost it until you save the project and close it, and then it's gone. Right now, while I've still got the project open, I can once again do Command Z or on a Windows Control Z, and I can get my two original tracks back. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to do a mix and render before you export your podcast. You want to make sure that you solo that mix and render track or mute the other tracks that you don't want in the final mix. Because whatever you've got unmuted is going to export into your podcast. I'll see you next time.